The key findings were uh, of Castle AF is the, that ablation was superior to pharmacological treatment in uh, improving mortality and admissions for heart failure. It was a composite endpoint. And if you, we reduced uh, mortality by you know, more than 40%, 46%, and we reduced hospitalization by around 47% uh, admissions for heart failure. So that's the two main findings. And also uh, in this meeting, during this meeting, we're presenting a, a new data on improvement in ejection fraction with ablation, which was superior to pharmacological treatment as well as well as uh, the quality of life data that associated with ablation, which were superior to the pharmacological treatment. These new data were presented during the HRS 2019. I mean, the answer is straightforward. When you improve mortality, you need to recommend this treatment as a first-line therapy. That's my opinion. And there's other studies, I and mean, the Castle AF wasn't based on one study only. The other studies showed the, uh, that ejection fraction, quality of life, you know, six million walks, and mortality improves with ablation from previous studies. So Castle came in to confirm this, and we saw recent data from the Cabana trial as well, showing that the heart failure population do improve in terms of mortality, do better with ablation. So putting this all together, it should be recommended as a first-line therapy for this patient population that's suffering very well from AFib and heart failure. Uh, you know AFib makes it worse as a heart failure patient and I think ablation have enough data now to improve mortality, <coughs> to improve function, to improve you know quality of life, to improve burden. Altogether you should recommend it as a first line therapy. I think the highlights is uh, uh, so far is we have uh, the first time ever we have a, a digital health summit within HRS. So as you know, this whole tools uh, that been introduced by the giants in tech like Apple, Google, you know, Facebook, uh, Samsung, and others has been getting into a new group of people, has empowering our patient like never before. So we at HRS uh, for the first time we started a committee directed towards that topic. It's called the Digital Health Committee. And uh, yesterday was in the birth of this committee practically by starting the Digital Health Summit. It was a whole day summit with the tech giants, with the patients, with entrepreneurs, with physicians dealing with this, trying to educate our members and cardiologists and electrophysiologists and beyond and patients on the use of these tools, how to integrate them into EP and cardiology and how better to manage them. So we're very excited. I think this was a great, great highlight. More than 600 people in the room. It was a great start for the sessions. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, I think. Uh, we're still learning, as you know. There's a, if you look at the meeting around you today, from monitoring to to diagnostic, to treatment. There's a lot of innovations and a lot of new ideas around this, uh, this uh, annual session here. But uh, I think one of the major issues that we're still lacking is personalization of treatment. How we're better with the tools we have today, with the machine learning, with the uh, new robotic treatments, how we can standardize the treatment. I think we need to work all together on, if you ask me what's the one thing we need to focus on, is how we standardize procedures by personalizing approaches, uh, by personalizing ablation in a way that everybody, everybody in the world will do the same procedure in the same approach, the same way to look at the outcomes. That would be great.